Well, hello everybody. Welcome back to Red Tool House. I get a question from time to time, uh, more recently here with uh, a lot of the saw milling videos, but why I like to mill poplar so much. And tulip poplar is one of my favorite woods to mill. And I want to take some time real quick to explain why I choose poplar over most other things. Well, one of the most obvious reasons why I choose poplar is its abundance. So here in our 100 acres in uh, central West Virginia, Appalachian hardwoods, um, this property back in the 1960s, so it was cleared off and was pastured with cattle, I believe. So after the land became abandoned and the forest tried to reclaim, then of course poplar, yellow poplar, really took off quite well. So we have it all over the place, and it's kind of neat. You can actually see where the places were that were cleared at one time and other places that are older growth forests because the poplar's not nearly as abundant. Here behind me is primarily all poplar. Now there's different species mixed in there, but the majority of it is poplar. Now when I say poplar, I mean tulip poplar or yellow poplar, which I, I believe is not actually a true poplar, but it's like this tree right here, the straight one. That's what we're talking about. Another reason I like to choose poplar to mill is they are really straight when they grow. They, uh, they grow fast, and unless they're encumbered, you know, unless they've experienced some trauma at an early age, they'll grow almost like phone poles. And since they grow fast in deforested areas, they can usually beat out the competition. So they grow straight, they grow fast, and pretty true. And that makes them ideal candidates for the sawmill because I can get multiple logs out of one tree. Whereas if I was doing you know, a big oak or something, most likely I'm going to have a large branch after that first or second log. So here's a good example of straightness. This poplar log that I skidded down here, uh, it's probably been a month ago. This log, what's left is about 30 feet, but I've already cut an eight foot log off the end and milled it. So it was almost 40 feet and almost phone pole straight. There was a tiny little crick, just a tiny little bend at the very top where I cut off that eight foot log to mill. So these things are all over the place and it's like phone poles growing in the woods. So I put this poplar log on here. I cut it off the one we were just showing. So this is the butt log. I cut about 11 feet, a little bit long. I need, I need 10 foot material. So I cut about 11. I've got my wedge, uh, my bird's mouth notch on one end. So obviously you want to take that out of my finish length. But milling up some dimensional lumber, we want true two by eights out of this. That's for a project that's two projects away. So get it milled, get it air drying, and that way when it's time to work on the project, then I'm ahead of the game with dry wood. Before I move forward, <laughs> a lot of new people to the channel really appreciate you guys subscribing and coming along for the ride. But just for future reference, I had a lot of comments in the last video ask if those were bears in the background when we had snow on the ground. Uh, no, those are actually pigs. They act like bears from time to time. In fact, Mongo was there scratching himself against the tree, but uh, they are pigs, not bears. So, but thank you for your, your concerns for my safety, some of you guys that cried out that there were bears behind me. So another reason why I like to mill poplar is if it's clean, it's very, very easy to mill. So if I haven't drug it through the mud and got a bunch of rocks and things in the deep furrows of the bark, then it's very, very easy to mill. It feels like I'm actually milling pine, but this is technically a hardwood. But uh, blades go through it fine. If, again, if I keep a clean log, I can get four or five, maybe even six logs out of it without a debarker, without doing anything like that on the front end, just zipping through. It's quite a difference when you've got uh, a red oak or a white oak or a hickory on here versus putting poplar on. You definitely know what you're cutting. I could tell with my eyes closed what was on the mill compared to those two. So really easy to mill.
So this log that was 14 inch diameter on the short end, this is the butt end, it was bigger there, but 14 inch diameter on this end, I ended up with a 10 by 12 cant with some wane, as you see there. So we're going to just keep whittling it down a little bit to take a, another cut here, turn, be able to get my, uh, maximize my two by eights, my true two by eights. But that's one thing you don't see with poplar. You don't see uh, commercial industries using poplar for dimensional. And that's a whole nother story. That's a whole nother can of worms that we'll, we may address that at some point. But I have discovered that for dimensional lumber on my agricultural building builds, in my barn, my chicken coops, pig barns, those type of things, I love building with it. It actually stays pretty true. It doesn't warp like crazy like a pine or any of that other super quick growth softwood. It's easy to manipulate. You can work it well with uh, hand tools and those things. And then if you keep it dry, keep it from being in ground contact and keep it from being constantly wet, it'll last forever. There's barns all over West Virginia that are made from wide plank poplar and they're still in great shape. The, uh, the sides, the board and batten sides of the barn are, are all, all poplar. Half of the uh, fairwing barn up here, the siding is all poplar. It'll last a long time if you keep it dry. Well, along those same lines, another reason why I like milling poplar is it does dry very quickly compared to other hardwoods. So when I stack up my poplar for future projects, even though I'm outside, I really don't have a cover over it, it's just out here in the elements, within a couple months, you can definitely feel the moisture content, how much it's dropped. In fact, the um, video earlier this week, or maybe it was last week, can't keep track of all these, where we were starting on our uh, mobile chicken coop, it's way down there. You can see the frame structure. I milled those boards just a couple months ago, and they're one and a quarter by threes, and those things were already really, really dry. In fact, they had, they had shrunk about an eighth of an inch in thickness, and they had shrunk almost a quarter of an inch in width already. So that's how much moisture had escaped, and that cell structure had contracted and hardened, and it's pretty stable wood. I'll actually be planing some of it here in the next couple of weeks as we work on this project. So I'm gonna see how it goes through the planer and put my wood shop moisture meter on and just see how it shakes out. So stick around for that one.
All right, so that one log yielded five really nice true two by eights. And then that top one, a lot of weight on it. He's not gonna count. Too scruffy to use for what my project is. But then there's also a one and a quarter in there. That was the leftover. When I, once I set my scale, that's what I had left over. Probably could have balanced that out a little bit better and, and sacrificed that scruffy one and been able to save uh, the bottom one, but here's what it is. Well, I actually need three more to finish this project, so I'm going to grab another log and throw it on there so we can wrap that up. But before I do, I want to step inside the workshop and show you some other benefits of poplar. So all the benefits of milling poplar that I mentioned out by the mill carry over to woodworking poplar. Uh, so it's, it's super easy to work. You don't get a lot of chip out. You don't get a lot of tear because it's got a decently tight grain. And you can see when it's planed, so here's a piece of poplar that's been planed and surfaced on four sides. It really has a nice creamy color to it. There's a little bit of that green stripe, but as this patinas, it'll actually start to turn brown. So as it's just aged, as it's in wherever it is, wherever it's installed to get some UV on it, then it'll start to turn a lighter brown. So the thing I like about it is it takes stain really well. So I had to wipe this trim down because it was covered in dust. But here's a piece of poplar trim that's stained one color. This actually matches the, uh, we made this to match the uh, baseboard and casing in our guest bedroom. So that's poplar. And then this right here is poplar as well. And it's been stained to uh, match a colonial maple. And this is uh, part of the crown molding I made up, a cut off piece of crown molding that's in our cathedral ceiling in our great room. So you can see going with something like this that's very, very white, doesn't have a lot of color and big open grain in it, it really accepts stain well. And you can manipulate it to do a lot of different things to match a lot of different woods that you're trying to match. So you know, if we were going to try to go with a dark, wa a dark walnut or try to match pine, that's actually what this is, is to make it look like a colonial maple so it blends well with the pine tongue and groove we have in the ceiling. So the $10,000 question, of course, is if I didn't have all this poplar standing on my property, would I be that excited about it? Well, I obviously wouldn't go seeking it out. I wouldn't be buying logs when I have um, a bunch of other things standing. So I wouldn't necessarily try to make it that big of a priority. But since I've got it, take advantage of the resource that I have. There's tons of it back there. It'll take me five lifetimes to try to mill enough to even make a dent. It's growing back faster than I can cut it. So I'm going to use it and take full advantage of all the benefits it offers. So if you think you may have poplar on your property, definitely identify it, check it out, and be ready to use it. Or if you have to go buy logs, check to see what the price is on poplar. I think you'd be surprised uh, the, the board footage price in the log form compared to the other hardwoods that are out there. Well, I know we've had a lot of new people come to the channel here in the past couple weeks, man. I really appreciate it. Appreciate you guys watching. Uh, if you're new to the channel, yeah, we'll, we'll do sawmill stuff. We do lumber things. We build projects here on our farm as we try to do a more sustainable living, more back to the back to the land type living. We have pigs and chickens and all that kind of stuff. So we usually detail a lot of those things. So hopefully there's something that'll keep your attention here and keep you coming back. All right. Take care, everybody.